Mark Fox has seen enough. Three Georgia turnovers and only one bucket, and Kentucky red hot from the field, and in the first three minutes, they lead by seven. And it's a very important game in the SEC East because Florida lost today to Mississippi State, so they dropped to five and two, and that means everybody can get closer to the Gators. And this is the second matchup with Georgia for the Kentucky Wildcats. They lost by seven in Athens three weeks ago. Let's take a look at our Michelin starting lineups. Here's how they started the game a couple of minutes ago. Georgia, Gerald Robinson and Dustin Weir in the backcourt with Travis Leslie, Jeremy Price, and Trey Tompkins up front. And on the other side for the Wildcats of Kentucky, and their starting five has been very strong here in the early going. Brandon Knight, DeAndre Liggins, Darius Miller with Terrence Jones and Josh Harrelson up front for John Calipari. Brad, you say Kentucky's been very strong in the early going. That's the key to this ball game. When they lost at Georgia in the conference opener, Georgia just whipped them around the rim, just physically whipped a young Kentucky team. And Kentucky must be strong in this basketball game, especially around the rim on both ends of the floor. Travis Leslie, Trey Tompkins finally gets a touch and draws a double team immediately. Leslie had it rejected by Miller, got it back. And the outside jumper goes for Dustin Ware. And Robinson's going to come out after picking up an early foul. I think it's more because he had two of the three turnovers. And he's the guy that's supposed to run the show for Georgia and hadn't done it very well in the opening stanza here. So Sherrod Brantley comes in to take his spot. Georgia pretty much has opened this game up in a 1-2-2 zone. Something I don't think Kentucky anticipated. If you're going to zone Kentucky, you better make sure you know where Brandon Knight and Miller, those are the two weapons right now on the outside. Jones gets it right back out to Miller. He's going to try to drive the zone, got his man in the air. Now Jones is cut off on a double team by Georgia. Two to shoot, and up and under and in. Well, how about Darius Miller? And how about Terrence Jones to get the ball out of a double team in the coffin corner? That's what made the play. And Georgia just sloppy with their entry passes right now into the paint. That's another Georgia turnover. Jump ball, actually. The dogs will keep it. But they're off to a sloppy start at Rupp Arena. Here, Terrence Jones, the freshman, who's really played well and had 24 points and 10 rebounds the last time these two teams met. And the last time they did meet, if you didn't hear about it uh, earlier, Georgia won in Athens three weeks ago. But this is a different place and different story and a more mature Kentucky team. Price in low, blocked by Harrelson. Brandon Knight at the point. And if you get the ball to the baseline, you have a quickness advantage against that Georgia zone defense. Here's Liggins going over the zone. Missed the shot. Harrelson keeps it alive. Harrelson rebounded about one every three minutes that he's on the floor. That's a good ratio. That's his role. He lives off of straight line drives. Number one rebounder in the conference at over nine per game. Jones asking for it. Kicks it outside. Knight for three. Got it. So hold it right here, guys. Look, look where Brandon Knight is, right there. He stayed. They score the ball around the rim. They get to the free throw stripe, and that's what they have to do in this game. Harrelson underneath. Nice look down low to the big fella. Some straight line drives and straight line passes. You see how he got his shoulders, Brad, squared up to the passer? He wasn't a small target. This is a big guy. Yep. But even your big guys, you want to be as big as possible, and that's what he did. Passes the ball on the interior in traffic as well as anyone in this league. And Knight is going to try another one. Well, that time he was wide open, and he's buried two of the three he's taken out there. Ashley Judd talking with the Georgia players about that very thing today. If they could beat Kentucky, and they're not off the Texas team that's undervalued right now in the rankings, and a Texas A&M team that's overvalued in the rankings. Look at this guy. Wow. He can really shoot it from three-point land, number one in the conference. Cancer has uh, reoccurred, and uh, he'll fight it just like he fought it three years ago. Buddy, hang in there. We're with you. Lamb on the outside for three. Line. 
He's their best outside shooter. Here's Liggins. Boy, this, look at this, Brad. They're, they're at 25 before they ever get into their zone offense. It's that lag time that Kentucky has to talk about at halftime. Lamb got an open 15-footer. Can't let a good shooter be that open. Eight for Lamb, and the lead swells to 14. All Kentucky right now. The fans are loving it at Rupp. Steal by Liggins. And he stepped out of bounds, or he would have been on his way to a slam in the other direction. Boy, Jaron Land just does a terrific job of giving the defense a little lift fake and then dribbles himself into a wide open 15 foot shot. Turned down a covered up three to get a high quality two. Sometimes you question this kid's motor when you break him down on film. He's played hard so far in this game. Shot clock is at 24. Doug Shaw just looked over at us and said there wasn't a possession change when Liggins was going out of bounds, so they don't reset the shot clock. Doesn't matter. Georgia doesn't get a good shot again. And here come the Wildcats with a big lead under four minutes to go. And Williams prevented Darius Miller from a windmill jam. We'll go to the free throw line when we come back, though. The packed house in Lexington loving what they're seeing right now. Pointer of the ball game by Darius Miller. Georgia trying to pick up the intensity on defense. Make a run at Liggins. They move it around to an open Duran Land. Bam. Partner, that's not the extra pass. That's the right pass. It's exactly where the ball should have went, and it was there on time. Carved it up. The ball is going to get swung up top and then to the corner. And now watch. This is now the right pass is boom. It's to the open guy. Knight could have forced one. Delivered right on the numbers, right on time. It's an easy then lift for Deron Lamb. He didn't have to get off of his rhythm to catch the ball. So Gerald Robinson ends the half at the buzzer with a layup up high off the glass, even though Vargas partially rejected it. It cuts it down to a 15-point advantage. You can see Trey Tompkins, a couple of fouls early and only four points. Eight turnovers. That didn't help George in the early going. And... 52% field goal shooting for Kentucky. Red hot from the beginning. And Jimmy said six out of 12 from outside the arc. So that's how they built the big lead. Let's see if they can hold on to it here at home to win their 29th straight game. Second longest winning streak in the country. They open up with their starting five on the floor. Liggins misses this one. And Georgia with Trey Tompkins the rebound. I think the first three minutes is critical for the guys in black. They have to establish Tompkins and Price around the rim if they're going to get back in this ballgame. They have to do it right now. Leslie will try an outside jumper. Three won't go, and he's not a good three-point shooter. So that's probably not the opening possession they were looking for. Tompkins and Price, Brad, they need the one. Got their paws on the basketball. Jones goes in strong. Making it a little bit more of a game. Here's Miller on the drive. He missed in close, got his own miss, and has a chance for a three-point play now because of it. Nice hustle to go get his own. They're sitting back there by the blue water right now. I if know they that. lose, the flight attendant comes and says, excuse me, sir, <laughs> you're off. Somebody else is on. That's good. <laughs> well, what was once a blowout in the making has become a basketball game at Rupp Arena. The fans during that last time out pretty aware of that, that uh, they'll get involved here pretty soon in an eight-point game. Lamb, pull-up jumper. Got it. Into this part of the floor, boom, right there. That's exactly what he does to Dustin Ware, who's only 6'1". He goes and then spins back and look at his shoulders, get squared up. This is just an easy... Now Kentucky using some clock here and spreading things out. Maybe under the four-minute mark before they take the next shot. Unless Knight gets one right here, and he does. That was beautiful one-on-one -on -one basketball by Brandon Knight. He did off the on-ball action. Can't go right, so he goes left and then splits and gets to the rim. This is a kid that doesn't take contact very well, but he's very good at getting away from contact. A slick move by Brandon Knight played with the first half. That's why it's so important to get on with the next game. Now let's see the urgency from Kentucky. 
As with under two minutes to go, their once 17 point lead has been cut to six. Remember, Georgia was down eight to Florida in regulation the other night with not that much time left and got it to two overtimes. Knight doesn't get it. Rebound is loose. He's trying to save it. Everybody's working for it, and it's going to be Georgia basketball. Harrelson's going to come back in for Kentucky. He's been a big inside presence today with his rebounding and shot blocking and just having that huge body underneath being a pest for Trey Tompkins and company. Robinson trying to preserve every second. Waits for that ball to touch his hand with a minute and a half to go. Here's another three-pointer. And Knight with a rebound. I think you got a foul if you're Georgia. I think you got to go and you can't be too selective. There you go. Bryce fouls Harrelson, who's hit both of his free throws tonight. Not quite tonight, still this afternoon. Fourth foul on Jeremy Price. Don't forget, college game day follows us, and then Kansas State and Kansas will have at it. So Reese and the guys are standing by. They'll be with you in the next minute 13, barring some sort of uh, miraculous overtime here, but it's not without the possibility. Robinson throws it up, and he's fouled. It didn't go in, but he'll go to the free throw line. That, 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 that has to be a shooting foul. Well, I would think so. Because I was going to say a chance for a three. It's not. I was going to say if that went yeah. in, it would have been a three-point play. Wow. Well, Mark Fox is thinking what we're thinking. That, 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 you're talking about a guy in the shooting motion now. He was stepping into that layup. Wow. Tompkins fadeaway jumper on the baseline. He just can't find it today. And now they foul Darius Miller. And Price is going to come back in, and Barnes will go out. Well, look at Brandon Knight. Get the ball. Now, square up. Own your spot on the floor. He doesn't own it, and Robinson just rips it. Georgia needs points, and they need him in a hurry. And another bad pass by Robinson. And Kentucky this time did get a timeout. And Travis Leslie's looking at Gerald Robinson as if to say, what are you trying to get me an underhand pass from 12 inches away for? I mean, this is just... There's no place to go with a basketball. Uh, bad, bad, bad decision. The freshman for Kentucky. Had three threes in the first half. He's really been in a nice rhythm, hasn't he? Even when he's had to put it on the floor, he's done it to the speed that Deron Lamb is comfortable with. That's a good example of it right there. His middle game, because he's 6'4", if he gets to those sweet spots, he's very much under control, and he goes straight up and straight down. He can make some very tough twos which is not easy to do. With all that said and done, two possession it's game. still a two-possession game with 23 seconds to go. So Georgia out of timeouts. The words, the loss to Tennessee and the loss to Florida, they don't need to be spoken again for Georgia. It's behind them. They're good enough to battle back and be an NCAA tournament team, but they have to get control of their own destiny. Kentucky holds on after letting a big lead slip away.